Uh, what does a preacher do when he is celebrating in the first reading? Talks about adultery and the gospel reading talks about adultery. I don't know, I'm trying to avoid talking about adultery. <laughs> However, I think I found a way. The first reading recalls the sin of David. You don't need to have that explained to you. You have heard the gospel, the, the, the passage, that it tells you how he sinned. He first saw a woman bathing. He allowed that to that desire to develop into desire. He got the woman, slept with her, and she became pregnant. And her husband was at war. So he tried to get the husband to come home and sleep with his wife. The husband was true to the battle, uh, uh, the, the battle uh, rituals of the time where someone in, in war who was home on leave could not go to sleep with his wife while his, uh, his, his companions were fighting war. So David connived to have him exposed to great danger in war and he of course was killed. So one sin led to another. Thinking that he could get away with it, he tried to hide it. But when the guy when the husband got killed, he married the woman and she had a baby and of course uh, the baby died. David thought everyone was unaware of that sin. But he had to admit it. The gospel gives us a prostitute. Coming before Jesus, she realized her sins in many ways. She was very sorry. And you, you, you heard the ritual that she followed. Now, when I preach on these texts tomorrow at the cathedral, I will speak of the extreme danger of addictions. What kind of addictions? Not to adultery, for that may be implicated, but to pornography. Try again. Ah, there, it's staying. I don't think it wants me to speak on pornography. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to speak on pornography. I'm going to speak about the effects of this. I'm presuming that the netters are too busy to watch much TV at all, let alone watch pornographic television. But just in case you do fall into this sin, and it is a sin, you have to repent like David. Because internet pornography starts small, but can end up destroying every healthy relationship you enjoy. Everything. So stay clear of it. If you have become addicted, you must go to confession and seek out help because this kind of addiction really gets a grip on people. And you need help, professional help. Some counselor, someone who knows something about addictions to pornography, and that person could possibly help you. One thing I can tell parents. Look into parental controls in your system. And please do not place your computer in a private place. Never do that. Make sure it is out in the open, in the living room, in the way of everyone. Be very careful about laptops. There's strangely one consolation. The internet itself gives you all the advice you might need on how to overcome this addiction to pornography. It tells you where to find help and it is there on your text. You know, sometimes, especially when you finish a year of successful ministry, you could feel as strong as King David, wonderful on conquering all of his enemies, but watch his eyes, and watch your eyes. Watch what you want, because it is there like a devouring lion, ready to destroy anyone and anything who will look at its product. That's enough on pornography. I don't need to underline anything more. 
Please say no. <laughs> okay. The next text I will use tonight is, to me, very moving. It is the next, it's the text of St. Paul, and I quote it. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. This, speaks, this text speaks of the intimacy of a disciple with our Lord. To me, it is a result of many, many profound encounters, especially in the Eucharist. When a disciple is really in Christ, and Christ is in the disciple. The two have become one. We can always hope for this kind of closeness, this kind of intimacy. Christ Jesus is always ready to give it, and he is always ready to be alive through us, and with us, and in us, to the glory of God the Father. As we say at every Eucharist, through him, with him, and in him, we go to the Father through Him. We go to the Father with Him. And we go to the Father in Him. We are so intimate we can cry out with St. Paul, it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. Now, this is my last Eucharist with you as your president. I may agree someday to come as an ex-president. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you're a new president or a lot. I want you to know just how much I have enjoyed working with you. Every year we get a group of young people and I find myself saying, where do you get such marvelous people? Where do you find them? Looking at the future, I do not think I could hope for anything more than that you continue to expand your operation, but always keep in mind that the real objective for all of you workers staff and young people, the real objective is to arrive at a personal encounter with Christ. What I hope for you is that you will be able one day to say, it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. That would be the greatest of all consolations, and it would bring great joy to you and to everyone who knows you. For the people who are prepared to work in the sector of the Francophones, you can identify as you are here. Il y en a quelques-unes. Lisez ces présents. De toute façon, je vous souhaite le plus grand, le plus grand succès. Vous embarquez dans une aventure qui s'ouvre à l'avenir. Que Dieu vous protège et vous garde dans son amour. Archbishop Prendergast, Terence Prendergast, who is a good friend of mine, and is already a good friend of, of Ned. Did you know that? He's the next Archbishop of Ottawa. Did you know that? <laughs> okay. He's the next Archbishop of Ottawa. He's coming on Monday for a short visit, and he'll be back here permanently uh, in July. His installation is on June 26th, 10 o'clock in the morning, and he, he has a previous vigil in the cathedral here on Sunday, on Monday night. He loves young people and he would like as many of you as possible to be here. Jam with us. I'd love to see that. And to give him really the strength and the support that every Archbishop needs when coming to a large diocese with many, many responsibilities, such as a responsibility to look after Ned. And it's a joyful responsibility, but it's still a responsibility. So if you're around at all, he's come to especially on uh, Monday night. But if you're free, it's my invitation that it's a little bit difficult on uh, Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock. So, uh, the future, I think, is assured in terms of archbishops. You have Prendergast, who is a friend of yours already. He's already on the board. He knows you, and he loves you as much as I do. So I will always keep you in my prayers. You are special. I love you and I thank the Lord for sending you to us here in Ottawa. And thank you for coming. All of you.